Hello everyone and welcome back to Jacklet Educational Channel. So this is the part 15 rapid revision series for the GATE Ecology and Evolution paper. In this video, we are going to discuss many important concepts which have come in the previous years of GATE Ecology and Evolution paper. And yes, guys, if you haven't watched the previous parts in this series, the link is provided in the i button as well as in the description below. So if you haven't watched, you can watch them because they are very very important. So without wasting much time, let's start today's video. The first question for today's video is which one of the following makes a species most vulnerable to extinction? So I'll read the options for you, low density throughout a large geographic range and in several habitat types or locally common in a restricted geographic range and in several habitat types or low density throughout a large geographic range and in a specific habitat type or locally common in a restricted geographic range and in a specific habitat type. So here you have to think which will be the option where the species is most vulnerable for the extinction. So here the correct option will be option number D. Yes, locally common that means it is telling about the endemic species that is locally present in a restricted geographic range and in a specific habitat type only so they are most vulnerable for extinction but these three are not vulnerable to extinction as compared to the final option so these things you have to analyze and then only you have to select the correct option so let's move on to the next question the next question is a graph in which the question is telling the frequency distribution of a trait in two populations that means x and y are two population are shown in the figure so here the frequency is in the y axis and value is in the x axis and this is the y graph this is the x graph for the two populations that are x and y population so here you have to select which has the higher mean which has the higher standard deviation so here i will give you certain seconds to think about this answer then i will reveal the correct option so here also correct option will be option number d because y has higher mean and y has also higher standard deviation so why we will analyze this graph very very simple thing as you can see here this is the values given in the x-axis so here more values in case of this is the y graph in case of y population the mean is high that means here the mean is falling here but in case of x population the mean is falling on this value of the graph so as a result y will be having the higher mean than x Similarly for standard deviation. So what is standard deviation? Deviation from the mean point where it is maximum it will be called as more standard deviation where from mean point the deviation is less it will be called as less standard deviation. So here as you can see in the graph in the case of y population you can see there is much more deviation from the mean that is the central point but here in case of x population there is less deviation from the mean point. So here higher standard deviation will be also for y population that means option d will be correct so i hope you have understood this one let's move on to the next question the next question is very very easy simple thing you have to analyze only read the question twice the question is two sister species of bulbuls have non-overlapping distribution one is distributed in india and the other in sri lanka which one of the following modes of speciation is the most parsimonious explanation for this pattern so for most of you parsimonious will be the matter of concern because nobody will be knowing the correct meaning so here parsimonious mean in order to give less effort or less investment for the explanation for this pattern without much more investigation what we can say that what kind of speciation is this if one species is in india and other in sri lanka so here this is telling about the allopatric speciation yes very easy so when there is the barrier geographical barrier between two places then two species will be different so this is talking about the allopatric speciation so here the india is there and here in our base sri lanka is there so that's why there are two different barriers are there that's where two different bulbul species are present so it is an example of allopatric speciation so i hope you have understood this one also let's move on to the next question the next question is on our screen the question is in an arctic ocean food chain killer whales feed on sea otters which feed on sea urchins which in turn feed on kelps the kelps are type of seaweed and the question is still in an increase in the abundance of killer whales causes sea otter abundance to decline similarly 
it leads to higher sea urchin densities which in turn reduces the abundance of the kelp that are seaweeds so here the question is asking which one of the following terms describe this phenomenon so i'll write it down here first is what top of the chain they are killer whales so we'll write down as kw and they are feeding on the sea otter sea otter is feeding on sea urchin sea urchin is feeding on kelp so we'll write it down as k so here as per the question there is an increase in the abundance of killer whale so killer whale population increases as a result they feed on more sea otter so as a result sea otter population will decrease so when the sea otter population decreases the sea urchin population will increase because sea otters are the predator for sea urchins so now sea urchin will flourish and as a result what will happen the sea urchin when they are increasing kelp will decrease because sea urchin they feed on kelp so as you can see when the top performer that is the top tropic level the consumer that is killer whales when they are increasing it is impacting on the subsequent down the lane the tropic level so it is telling about the tropic cascade yes cascade means what cascade means any phenomena when it is passing from one level to another sequence wise it is called as cascade so in this way when the killer whale is affected that is increased so the whole tropic level is affected as a cascade form so it is the example of tropic cascade and when the top level consumer is controlling the whole food chain or the tropic level it will be called as the top down cascade yes and when the primary producer for example photosynthetic plants or primary producer when they are controlling the population for the upper consumer the top consumer then that will be called as bottom up cascade yes this example given the question is example of top down cascade when the bottom up cascade will occur when the primary consumer or the bottom level the organism when they are controlling the upper species in the tropic level it will be called as the bottom up cascade when they are affecting from one tropic level to another from bottom to top so i hope you have noted down and you have understood this concept let's so here before moving to the next question let us discuss two important concept which were asked in the options given in the last question first thing was prey switching so what is this prey switching when the currently preferred prey becomes rare so there are prey and there are predator we all know so when predator is feeding on one prey and when the prey is becoming rare then that predator may simply switch to an alternate prey yes when it founds an decrease in the level of the preferred prey then when it is moving to the alternate prey it is called as prey switching so it is switching to another prey this is very simple one other concept was given for the competitive exclusion principle so this principle states that two species competing for the same resource cannot coexist for example there is a species a and species b they are feeding on a particular c species that is the common species they are feeding then they cannot coexist so that is the law given by the competitive exclusion which was proposed by g f goss that's why it is also known as the goss law competitive exclusion also known as goss law we all know if you don't know note it down and let's move to the next question next question is something like this rising temperature due to global warming can stimulate the decomposition of organic matter and release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere so this is an example of what whether it is positive feedback negative feedback environmental heterogeneity or environmental stochasticity so this is the example of positive feedback yes what happens is rising temperature is due to global warming and it can stimulate the decomposition of organic matter as a result more carbon dioxide will be released so when more carbon dioxide will release more temperature will increase so this will be a cyclic form temperature increase more organic matter decomposition more co2 in atmosphere then more temperature so this will go on as a cyclic process and when it is a cyclic manner it will be called as positive feedback so i hope you have understood this thing and it is a process in which the end products of an action cause more of that action to occur in a feedback loop yes end product here it was release of carbon dioxide it will release and it will cause more action that means more of rising temperature that is the example of positive feedback so let's move on to the next question the next question is ant mimic spiders of the genus myrmarachne which are known for which one of the following evolutionary phenomena so here it is telling ant are there and they are mimicking 
द स्पाइडर्स विच आर ऑफ द जीनस मीर मैरक ने सो दे आर मिमिकिंग द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक ऑफ स्पाइडर सो इट इज एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ विच काइंड ऑफ इवोल्यूशनल फिनोमेना वेदर इट इज एपोसिमेटिमिजम एग्रेसिव मिमिक्री बेटेशियन मिमिक्री और मुलेरियन मिमिक्री सो हियर सम ऑफ यू विल बी कन्फ्यूज बिटवीन बेटेशियन मिमिक्री मुलेरियन मिमिक्री सो यर द करेक्ट ऑप्शन विल बी एग्रेसिव मिमिक्री येस बिकॉज एंट इज अ स्पीसीज एंड स्पाइडर इज अ डिफरेंट स्पीसीज दे आर नॉट रिलेटेड when they are in between related species related organism the mimicry is there we can call them as batesian or mullerian mimicry but when it is different than the related species that means ant is different species spider is different species and they are mimicking ants are mimicking so that is an example of aggressive mimicry the next question is conceptual question very easy the effective population size of a sexually reproducing diploid animal species will be highest when the sex ratio that is number of reproducing males per number of reproducing females is what so when the sex ratio will be how much that is 1 0.5 1.5 1 or 2 then it will be called as the highest that means the sexually reproducing diploid animal effective population size so here the correct option will be option number a 1 when the number of males will be equal to the number of females so let us assume it is x and number of females also x so x x cancel it will be 1 so 1 is to 1 when the ratio will be there then that will be called as the effective population size of a sexually reproducing diploid animal species so that will be the highest one let's move on to the next question the next question is the theory of evolution by natural selection was proposed by which one or more of the following scientists so this is i will tell you it is an example of msq question more than one options can be correct so read the options correctly and think about it so here the correct options will be charles darwin as well as alfred russel wallace so wallace and darwin both are given the credit for the proposal of theory of evolution by natural selection and we will know a bit more in the next slide yes darwin proposed the mechanism for evolution by natural selection charles darwin and alfred wallace working in borneo also proposed the same theory so it is called as the darwin wallace theory of evolution so both of them proposed this theory of evolution by natural selection that's why it is called as darwin wallace theory of evolution by natural selection and in the theory of natural selection what happens the organisms produce more offspring than are able to survive in the environment so in environment particular environment there are certain number of organism that can survive but in case of natural selection organism produce more offspring then are able to survive in their environment so more than the environment capacity the offsprings are produced in case of theory of natural selection so these were some of the things which we discussed in the video i hope you have noted down and you have learned something new if you like this don't forget to give a thumbs up subscribe the channel to get all further updates see you guys in our next video till then keep smiling and believe in yourself